Hey, what's up? Following up from last week's video, I wanted to talk about um, the Financial Times' piece by Ariela Budik about Wolfgang Tillmans's retrospective at the MoMA in New York. I briefly mentioned that this article inspired me to go back and engage with some of Tillmans's slightly more recent work. In today's video, I want to explore Budik's opinions on Tillmans's work. Again, I'm linking the article down below, and I didn't realize it was paywalled, but your mileage may vary. See, I was able to access the article many times before the payment plan breakdown wouldn't let me. I will focus on three points Ariella Budik makes about Tillmans' work and then finish the rest and have a little summary on the second part of this video. Let's start with their first criticism, right off the first paragraph. Number one, his failed claim to empathy. Budik quotes Tillmans twice in the first paragraph, like most photography that is not overtly political or conceptual. A lot of Tillmans' work depends on familiarity for its sensual and emotional impact. Let's simplify this whole thing using exactly one of the examples they offhandedly trivialize in the first part of the article. Grey jeans over stair post, 1991. I remember precisely the moment I saw this image, like when I was younger and I started shooting. While preparing the material for this video, I looked it up again after many years, and while I remembered it incorrectly, as I, th I remember the jeans being blue and the photo being vertical, uh, it still retains that same sense of recognition, I, like that same feeling of being young and waking up in someone else's house where a random housemaid had extended the mess of their room into a common area. It is that feeling precisely what Tillmans refers to in this quote, requoted by Budik. Quote, I can get in touch with somebody when they recognize a feeling. Oh, I felt like that before. I remember jeans hanging on a banister. Even though I've never seen that exact pair, I've seen my oranges on a windowsill. It's that sense that I am not alone. Budik turns this universal sense of recognition into a triviality that doesn't deserve the attention of a museum retrospective. They do this by reducing the photographs to their subject matters, um, one of the oldest ways of attacking a photographer's work. Quote, Surely you, dear viewer, who have known sweat and boots and hangovers are moved by the knowledge that others have too. End quote. As if Photographs are just means to transfer knowledge or understanding without prose or poetry. And when form is quote unquote wrong, Budik is quick to call it out. Quote, technically haphazard and out of focus, they speak most staringly to those who were young in the 90s. Specifically to the subculture of ecstatic dance parties, exuberant sexual experimentation, cassette mixtapes, filthy apartments and stained sheets. End quote. Budik finally confesses what the problem with this assumed recognition is. It doesn't work with them, because they were never invited to the party. Quote, I do belong to Tillmans' generation, but not to his world. And the feeling I get from his early photographs is less, quote, you've been here, than, quote, you had to be there, end quote. These first three paragraphs read a little bit like a long convoluted way of simply saying I don't like it because I cannot relate to the subject matter. I can that I mean that feeling surely resonates with me. There's so much more photography that can never mean anything to me than photography that is able to elicit the response I get from Tillmans's work. The difference is that I will never make the effort to write an article about those kinds of photographs, so I really admire the commitment Budik is putting, not only to try to engage with the work, but to find out and unpack while doing that. What is it exactly about Tillmans' work that is not interesting to them, or does not feel universal? Number two, how overplayed his role in decentralizing photography is. One of the defining traits of Tillmans is the way he hovers shadowy almost substanceless, a little behind and above all other straightforward and logical categorizations within the photographic landscape. He's at home shooting a fashion editorial or overlooking a print for a serious art show like this MoMA retrospective. Even his practice of presenting photographs in different formats, sizes, framed or unframed, poses questions about how we set a hierarchy on how images are used or even made. 
Additionally, he prevents subject matter from dominating his images, and he ends up photographing what could be labeled as banalities. And this is precisely where Budic pivots their idea from. This particular point of Budic's critique isn't necessarily aimed at Tillmans's work, um, but at the angle taken by MoMA, specifically through the essay written by Roxana Marcocci that accompanies the show. I know a lot about uh, photography and contemporary art. Quote, by transmitting, sharing, and setting images free, by multiplying their lives, he proposes a fully democratized experience of art. End quote. So, Budic argues that whilst doing this was commendable in the 90s, cameras in phones today and social media platforms where users share photos of their food or everyday life render Stillman's efforts irrelevant and obsolete. Quote, Sure, he was uncannily prescient about today's deluge of pets, plants, selfies, sunsets, and dick pics. He saw such undistinguishable snapshots as agents of empathy, all in one oracles of feeling, thoughts, and ideas. But what happens to your uniqueness when your insight becomes obvious? MoMA sets out to make an argument for a body of work that winds up foundering on its own mediocrity, asserting that he got there first isn't enough." End quote. That is so savage, and I can absolutely see where Budic is coming from, but once again, they are clinging to subject matter alone for this attack. And Tillmans's work is not subject-centric. In fact, a lot of his subjects end up being just an excuse to push the envelope with form. Form, as opposed to subject matter, is the one aspect of visual arts where the establishment will always resist change, it's much easier to sell novel subject matter with traditional form than traditional subject matter with innovative form. Number three, how he confuses subject matter with form. It's really unfortunate that Beauty picks on Tillmans's choice of subject matter to attack his relevance and then calls him out for confusing it with form based on this quote. This is Beauty quoting Tillmans, by the way. A painting by Ernst Ludwig Kirchner or George Gross of a nightclub scene from 1924 Berlin is seen as culture in a museum, end quote, he has said, whereas people would shrug off a wild night at the front nightclub as a decadent party, end quote. From this quote, it seems pretty clear that Tillmans is actually concentrating on subject matter for his photographs and how they can echo the paintings of Gross in that very specific sense. Budic accuses him of the following, quote, he appears to confuse subject matter with form. Gross made nightlife meaningful because he brought his gifts as painter and draftsman to bear on political satire. Tillman has no such power." End quote. Yes, fair enough. Tillmans will not use a painterly vocabulary in his photographs. I'm actually glad that Tillmans sticks to a strictly photographic vocabulary. But the harshest part of this criticism here is that Budic is implying that there isn't any equivalent to the craft involved in making a painting within the photographic process. Not only there are equivalents, but many of the properties that can be classified as part of the quote-unquote form, and which are integral part of what Budic calls Gross's gifts as a painter, do carry over from painting to photography, like composition, angle of view, color, contrast, shape, lighting. I think I've said enough for now about how much I disagree with the article, and I really wasn't aware of it until I started to prepare material for this video. Whatever disagreement I might have with their article, it's completely offset by the fact that it was written, I think. I really cannot remember reading a negative review of an art show or anything photography related for that matter in recent memory. Please stay tuned for the second part of this video. Like, subscribe and all that. Bye.